Racial segregation is the separation of people into racial or other ethnic groups in daily life. It may apply to activities such as eating in a restaurant, drinking from a water fountain, using a public toilet, attending school, going to the movies, riding on a bus, or in the rental or purchase of a home or of hotel rooms. Segregation is defined by the European Commission Against Racism and Intolerance as the act by which a natural or legal person separates other persons on the basis of one of the enumerated grounds without an objective and reasonable justification, in conformity with the proposed definition of discrimination. As a result, the voluntary act of separating oneself from other people on the basis of one of the enumerated grounds does not constitute segregation." According to the UN Forum on Minority Issues. The creation and development of classes and schools providing education in minority languages should not be considered impermissible segregation, if the assignment to such classes and schools is of a voluntary nature. Racial segregation is generally outlawed, but may exist de facto through social norms, even when there is no strong individual preference for it, as suggested by Thomas Schelling's models of segregation and subsequent work. Segregation may be maintained by means ranging from discrimination in hiring and in the rental and sale of housing to certain races to vigilante violence such as lynchings. Generally, a situation that arises when members of different races mutually prefer to associate and do business with members of their own race would usually be described as separation or de facto separation of the races rather than segregation. In the United States, segregation was mandated by law in some states and came with anti-miscegenation laws prohibitions against interracial marriage. Segregation, however, often allowed close contact in hierarchical situations, such as allowing a person of one race to work as a servant for a member of another race. Segregation can involve spatial separation of the races, and mandatory use of different institutions, such as schools and hospitals by people of different races. History Wherever there have been multiracial communities, there has been racial segregation. Only areas with extensive miscegenation, or mixing, such as Hawaii and Brazil, despite some social stratification, seem to be exempt. French Algeria Following its conquest of Ottoman-controlled Algeria in 1830, for well over a century France maintained colonial rule in the territory which has been described as quasi-apartheid. The colonial law of 1865 allowed Arab and Berber Algerians to apply for French citizenship only if they abandoned their Muslim identity. Azadine Hador argues that this established the formal structures of a political apartheid. Camille Benora Weissman writes that in contrast with the Moroccan and Tunisian protectorates. This colonial apartheid society was unique to Algeria. This internal system of apartheid met with considerable resistance from the Muslims affected by it, and is cited as one of the causes of the 1954 insurrection and ensuing independence war. <laughs> Germany In 15th century northeast Germany, people of Wendish, i.e. Slavic, origin were not allowed to join some guilds. According to Wilhelm Rabe, "...down into the 18th century no German guild accepted a Wend." German praise for America's institutional racism, previously found in Hitler's Mein Kampf, was continuous throughout the early 1930s, and radical Nazi lawyers were advocates of the use of American models. Race-based U.S. Citizenship laws and anti-miscegenation laws directly inspired the two principal Nuremberg laws—the Citizenship Law and the Blood Law. The ban on interracial marriage anti-miscegenation prohibited sexual relations and marriages between people classified as Aryan and non-Aryan. Such relationships were called Rassenschind race defilement. At first the laws were aimed primarily at Jews but were later extended to Gypsies, Negroes and their bastard offspring. Aryans found guilty could face incarceration in a concentration camp, while non-Aryans could face the death penalty. 
To preserve the so called purity of the German blood, after the war began, the Nazis extended the race defilement law to include all foreigners. Non -Germans. Under the general government of occupied Poland in 1940, the Nazis divided the population into different groups, each with different rights, food rations, allowed housing strips in the cities, public transportation, etc. In an effort to split Polish identity they attempted to establish ethnic divisions of Kashubian and Gorals based on these groups alleged Germanic component. During the 1930s and 1940s, Jews in Nazi-controlled states were made to wear yellow ribbons or stars of David, and were, along with Romas gypsies, discriminated against by the racial laws. Jewish doctors were not allowed to treat Aryan patients nor were Jewish professors permitted to teach Aryan pupils. In addition, Jews were not allowed to use any public transportation, besides the ferry, and were able to shop only from 3 to 5 p.m. in Jewish stores. After Kristallnacht, the night of broken glass, the Jews were fined 1 million marks for damages done by the Nazi troops and SS members. Jews and Roma were subjected to genocide as undesirable racial groups in the Holocaust. The Nazis established ghettos to confine Jews and sometimes Romas into tightly packed areas of the cities of Eastern Europe, turning them into de facto concentration camps. The Warsaw Ghetto was the largest of these ghettos, with 400,000 people. The Lodz Ghetto was the second largest, holding about 160,000. Between 1939 and 1945, at least 1 1.5 million Polish citizens were transported to the Reich for forced labor. In all, about 12 million forced laborers were employed in the German war economy inside Nazi Germany. Although Nazi Germany also used forced laborers from Western Europe, Poles, along with other Eastern Europeans viewed as racially inferior, were subject to deeper discriminatory measures. They were forced to wear a yellow with purple border and letter P for Poland, Polish cloth identifying tags sewn to their clothing, subjected to a curfew, and banned from public transportation. While the treatment of factory workers or farm hands often varied depending on the individual employer, Polish laborers as a rule were compelled to work longer hours for lower wages than Western Europeans. In many cities, they were forced to live in segregated barracks behind barbed wire. Social relations with Germans outside work were forbidden, and sexual relations or racial defilement were punishable by death. Topic: <inaudible> Imperial China. Topic: <inaudible> Tang Dynasty. Several laws enforcing racial segregation of foreigners from Chinese were passed by the Han Chinese during the Tang Dynasty. In 779 the Tang dynasty issued an edict which forced Uyghurs to wear their ethnic dress, stopped them from marrying Chinese females, and banned them from pretending to be Chinese. Chinese disliked Uyghurs because they practiced usury. The magistrate who issued the orders may have wanted to protect purity in Chinese custom. In 836, when Lu Chun was appointed as governor of Canton, he was disgusted to find Chinese living with foreigners and intermarriage between Chinese and foreigners. Liu enforced separation, banning interracial marriages, and made it illegal for foreigners to own property. Liu Chun believed his principles were just and upright. The 836 law specifically banned Chinese from forming relationships with dark peoples or people of color, which was used to describe foreigners, such as Iranians, Sogdians, Arabs, Indians, Malays, Sumatrans, among others. Topic. Qing dynasty The Qing dynasty was founded not by the Han Chinese who form the majority of the Chinese population, but the Manchus, who are today an ethnic minority of China. The Manchus were keenly aware of their minority status, however, it was only later in the dynasty that they banned intermarriage. Han defectors played a massive role in the Qing conquest of China. Han Chinese generals who defected to the Manchu were often given women from the imperial Aizen Gioro family in marriage while the ordinary soldiers who defected were given non-royal Manchu women as wives. The Manchu leader Nurhaci married one of his granddaughters to the Ming general Li Yongfang after he surrendered Fushun in Liaoning to the Manchu in 1618. Yurchen Manchu women married most the Han Chinese defectors in Laodong. 
Aizen Gyoro women were married to the sons of the Han Chinese generals Sun Saik, Sun Ssu Ko, Zheng Jimao, Keng Kai Mao, Shang Kexi, Shang Ko Shi, and Wu Sangui, Wu San Kui, a mass marriage of Han Chinese officers and officials to Manchu women numbering 1,000 couples was arranged by Prince Yoto and Hong Taiji in 1632 to promote harmony between the two ethnic groups. Zheng Zongming, a Han bannerman, was awarded the title of Prince Jingnan, and his son Zheng Jingmeo managed to have both his sons. Zheng Jingzhong and Zheng Zhaozhong become court attendants under Shunzi and get married to Aizen Gioro women, with Haojiz a son of Hong Taiji daughter marrying Zheng Jingzhong and Prince Abatai's Hong Taiji granddaughter marrying Zheng Zhaozhong. The Qing differentiated between Han Banaman and ordinary Han civilians. Han Banaman were made out of Han Chinese who defected to the Qing up to 1644 and joined the Eight Banners, giving them social and legal privileges in addition to being acculturated to Manchu culture. So many Han defected to the Qing and swelled up the ranks of the Eight Banners that ethnic Manchus became a minority within the Banners, making up only 16% in 1648, with Han Banaman dominating at 75%. It was this multi-ethnic force in which Manchus were only a minority, which conquered China for the Qing. It was Han Chinese Banaman who were responsible for the successful Qing conquest of China. They made up the majority of governors in the early Qing and were the ones who governed and administered China after the conquest, stabilizing Qing rule. Han Banaman dominated the post of governor general in the time of the Shunzi and Kangxi emperors, and also the post of governors, largely excluding ordinary Han civilians from the posts. To promote ethnic harmony, a 1648 decree from the Manchu Shunzi emperor allowed Han Chinese civilian men to marry Manchu women from the banners with the permission of the Board of Revenue if they were registered daughters of officials or commoners or the permission of their banner company captain if they were unregistered commoners. It was only later in the dynasty that these policies allowing intermarriage were done away with, the Qing implemented a policy of segregation between the Banaman of the Eight Banners Manchu Banaman, Mongol Banaman, Han Banaman and Han Chinese civilians. This ethnic segregation had cultural and economic reasons, intermarriage was forbidden to keep up the Manchu heritage and minimize sinicization. Han Chinese civilians and Mongol civilians were banned from settling in Manchuria. Han civilians and Mongol civilians were banned from crossing into each other's lands. Ordinary Mongol civilians in Inner Mongolia were banned from even crossing into other Mongol banners. A banner in Inner Mongolia was an administrative division and not related to the Mongol bannermen in the Eight Banners. These restrictions did not apply Han bannermen, who were settled in Manchuria by the Qing. Han bannermen were differentiated from Han civilians by the Qing and treated differently. The Qing dynasty started colonizing Manchuria with Han Chinese later on in the dynasty's rule, but the Manchu area was still separated from modern-day Inner Mongolia by the Outer Willow Palisade, which kept the Manchu and the Mongols in the area separate. The policy of segregation applied directly to the banner garrisons, most of which occupied a separate walled zone within the cities in which they were stationed. Manchu Banaman, Han Banaman, and Mongol Banaman were separated from the Han civilian population. While the Manchus followed the governmental structure of the preceding Ming dynasty, their ethnic policy dictated that appointments were split between Manchu noblemen and Han Chinese civilian officials who had passed the highest levels of the state examinations, and because of the small number of Manchus, this ensured that a large fraction of them would be government officials. <laughs> Italy In 1938, the fascist regime led by Benito Mussolini, under pressure from the Nazis, introduced a series of Italian racial laws instituting an official segregationist policy in the Italian Empire, especially aimed against Jews. This policy enforced various segregationist norms, like the prohibition for Jews to teach or study in ordinary schools and universities, to own industries reputed of major national interest, to work as journalists, to enter the military, and to wed non-Jews. Some of the immediate consequences of the introduction of the Provedimenti per la Defesa della Raza norms for the defense of the race included many of the best Italian scientists leaving their job, or even Italy. Amongst these, world-renowned physicists Emilio Segre, Enrico Fermi whose wife was Jewish, Bruno Pontecorvo, Bruno Rossi, Tullio Levi Civita, mathematicians Federigo Enriquez and Guido Fubini and even the fascist propaganda director, art critic and journalist Margarita Sarfati, who was one of Mussolini's mistresses. Rita Levi Montalcini, who would successively win the Nobel Prize for Medicine, was forbidden to work at the university. 
Albert Einstein, upon approval of the racial law, resigned from honorary membership of the Accademia dei Lincei. After 1943, when northern Italy was occupied by the Nazis, Italian Jews were rounded up for the Holocaust. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Jewish segregation. Jews in Europe generally were forced, by decree or by informal pressure, to live in highly segregated ghettos and shtetls. In 1204 the papacy required Jews to segregate themselves from Christians and to wear distinctive clothing. Forced segregation of Jews spread throughout Europe during the 14th and 15th centuries. In the Russian Empire, Jews were restricted to the so-called Pale of Settlement, the western frontier of the Russian Empire corresponding roughly to the modern-day countries of Poland, Lithuania, Belarus, Moldova and Ukraine. By the early 20th century, the majority of European Jews lived in the Pale of Settlement. Jewish population were confined to mellas in Morocco beginning from the 15th century. In cities, a mella was surrounded by a wall with a fortified gateway. In contrast, rural mellas were separate villages inhabited solely by the Jews. In the middle of the 19th century, J. J. Benjamin wrote about the life of Persian Jews. Less than pre greater than slash pre greater than dot 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 they are obliged to live in a separate part of town, for they are considered as unclean creatures, under the pretext of their being unclean, they are treated with the greatest severity and should they enter a street, inhabited by Muslims, they are pelted by the boys and mobs with stones and dirt, for the same reason, they are prohibited to go out when it rains, for it is said the rain would wash dirt off them, which would sully the feet of the Muslims. if a Jew is recognized as such in the streets, he is subjected to the greatest insults. The passers-by spit in his face, and sometimes beat him, unmercifully, if a Jew enters a shop for anything, he is forbidden to inspect the goods. Should his hand incautiously touch the goods, he must take them at any price the seller chooses to ask for them. Sometimes the Persians intrude into the dwellings of the Jews and take possession of whatever please them. Should the owner make the least opposition in defense of his property, he incurs the danger of atoning for it with his life. A Jew shows himself in the street during the three days of the Katal Maharam, he is sure to be murdered. Topic. Latin America Spanish colonists created caste systems in Latin American countries based on classification by race and race mixture. An extensive nomenclature developed, including the familiar terms, mulatto, mestizo, and zambo the latter the origin of Sambo. The Spanish had practiced a form of caste system in Hispania before their expulsion of the Jews and Muslims. While many Latin American countries have long since rendered the system officially illegal through legislation, usually at the time of independence, prejudice based on degrees of perceived racial distance from European ancestry combined with one's socioeconomic status remain, an echo of the colonial caste system. Norway On 16 May 1940 the Administrasjonsrådet asked Rikskommissariatet why radio receivers had been confiscated from Jews in Norway. That Administrasjonsrådet thereafter, quietly, accepted racial segregation between Norwegian citizens, has been claimed by Tor Bowman Larsen. Furthermore, he claimed that this segregation created a precedent. Two years later, with NS Styret in the ministries of Norway, Norwegian police arrested citizens at the addresses where radios had previously been confiscated from Jews. Topic: <inaudible> Rhodesia. Following a dispute over the terms for the granting of full independence, the British self-governing colony of Rhodesia, governed by a predominantly white minority government, unilaterally declared independence in 1965. Led by Prime Minister Ian Smith, it endured as an unrecognized state under white rule for the next 14 years, with majority rule coming in 1979 with the internal settlement between Smith's government and moderate black nationalists, the associated multiracial elections and the reconstitution of the country as Zimbabwe-Rhodesia, with Bishop Abel Muzoriwa at the helm of a coalition cabinet comprising 12 blacks and 5 whites. This new order also failed to win legitimacy in the eyes of the world, and British control returned to the country in December 1979, following the Lancaster House Agreement. New elections were held in 1980, and Zimbabwe gained recognized independence in April 1980, with Robert Mugabe as Prime Minister. 
Laws enforcing segregation had been around before 1965, although many institutions simply ignored them. One highly publicized legal battle occurred in 1960 involving the opening of a new theater that was to be open to all races, the proposed unsegregated public toilets at the newly built Reps Theater in 1959 caused an argument called, "...the Battle of the Toilets". <laughs> South Africa The apartheid system carried out by Afrikaner minority rule enacted a nationwide social policy, separate development, with the National Party victory in 1948, following the color bar discriminatory legislation dating back to the beginning of the Union of South Africa and the Boer Republics before which, while repressive to black South Africans along with other minorities, had not gone nearly so far. Apartheid laws can be generally divided into following acts. Firstly, the Population Registration Act in 1950 classified residents in South Africa into four racial groups, black, white, colored, and Indian, and noted their racial identities on their identifications. Secondly, the Group Areas Act in 1950 assigned different regions according to different races. People were forced to live in their corresponding regions and the action of passing the boundaries without a permit was made illegal, extending pass laws that had already curtailed black movement. Thirdly, under the Reservation of Separate Amenities Act in 1953, amenities in public areas, like hospitals, universities and parks, were labeled separately according to particular races. In addition, the Bantu Education Act in 1953 segregated national education in South Africa as well. Additionally, the government of the time enforced the pass laws, which deprived black South Africans of their right to travel freely within their own country. Under this system black people were severely restricted from urban areas, requiring authorization from a white employer to enter. Uprisings and protests against apartheid appeared immediately when apartheid arose. As early as 1949, the youth wing of the African National Congress ANC advocated the ending of apartheid and suggested fighting against racial segregation by various methods. During the following decades, hundreds of anti-apartheid actions occurred, including those of the black consciousness movement, students' protests, labor strikes, and church group activism etc. In 1991, the Abolition of Racially Based Land Measures Act was passed, repealing laws enforcing racial segregation, including the Group Areas Act. In 1994, Nelson Mandela won in the first multiracial democratic election in South Africa. His success fulfilled the ending of apartheid in South African history. <laughs> United States After Jim Crow laws were passed that segregated African Americans and whites, the lives of those who were negatively affected saw no progress in their quest for equality. Racial segregation was not a new phenomenon, as almost four million blacks had been slaves before the Civil War. The laws passed segregated African Americans from whites. Signs were used to show non-whites where they could legally walk, talk, drink, rest, or eat. For those places that were racially mixed, blacks had to wait until all white customers were dealt with. Rules were also enforced that restricted African Americans from entering white stores. Segregated facilities extended from white only schools to white only graveyards. After the 13th Amendment abolished slavery in America, racial discrimination became regulated by the so called Jim Crow laws, which mandated strict segregation of the races. Though many such laws were instituted shortly after fighting ended, they only became formalized after the 1877 end of the Reconstruction period. The period that followed is known as the nadir of American race relations. The legislation or in some states, such as Florida, the state constitutions that mandated segregation lasted at least until Brown v. Board of Education 1954. While the U.S. Supreme Court majority in the 1896 Plessy v. Ferguson case explicitly permitted separate but equal facilities specifically transportation facilities Justice John Marshall Harlan in his dissent protested that the decision was an expression of white supremacy he predicted that segregation would stimulate aggressions upon the admitted rights of colored citizens arouse race hate and perpetuate a feeling of distrust between the races Feelings between whites and blacks were so tense, even the jails were segregated. 
Elected in 1912, President Woodrow Wilson ordered segregation throughout the federal government. In World War I, blacks served in the United States Armed Forces in segregated units. Black soldiers were often poorly trained and equipped, and were often put on the front lines in suicide missions. The U.S. military was still heavily segregated in World War II. The Air Force and the Marines had no blacks enlisted in their ranks. There were blacks in the Navy Seabees. The Army had only five African American officers. In addition, no African American would receive the Medal of Honor during the war, and their tasks in the war were largely reserved to non combat units. Black soldiers had to sometimes give up their seats in trains to the Nazi prisoners of war. American sports were racially segregated until the mid 20th century. In baseball, the Negro Leagues were established by Rube Foster for non white players, such as Negro League Baseball, which ran through the early 1950s. In basketball, the Black Fives all black teams were established in 1904, and emerged in New York City Washington D.C., Chicago, Pittsburgh, Philadelphia, and other cities. Racial segregation in basketball lasted until 1950, when the NBA became racially integrated. On September 11, 1964, John Lennon announced the Beatles would not play to a segregated audience in Jacksonville, Florida. City officials relented following this announcement. A contract for a 1965 Beatles concert at the Cow Palace in California specifies that the band not be required to perform in front of a segregated audience. In the reception to honor his Olympic success Jesse Owens was not permitted to enter through the main doors of the Waldorf Astoria New York and instead forced to travel up to the event in a freight elevator. The first black Oscar recipient Hattie McDaniel was not permitted to attend the premiere of Gone with the Wind with Georgia being racially segregated, and at the Oscars ceremony in Los Angeles she was required to sit at a segregated table at the far wall of the room. The hotel had a no blacks policy, but allowed McDaniel in as a favor. Many U.S. states banned interracial marriage. While opposed to slavery in the U.S., in a speech in Charleston, Illinois in 1858, Abraham Lincoln stated, I am not, nor ever have been in favor of bringing about in any way the social and political equality of the white and black races, that I am not, nor ever have been in favor of making voters or jurors of Negroes, nor of qualifying them to hold office, nor to intermarry with white people. I as much as any man am in favor of the superior position assigned to the white race. In 1967, Mildred Loving, a black woman, and Richard Loving, a white man, were sentenced to a year in prison in Virginia for marrying each other. Their marriage violated the state's anti-miscegenation statute, the Racial Integrity Act of 1924, which prohibited marriage between people classified as white and people classified as colored persons of non-white ancestry. In the Loving v. Virginia case in 1967, the Supreme Court invalidated laws prohibiting interracial marriage in the U.S. Institutionalized racial segregation was ended as an official practice during the civil rights movement by the efforts of such civil rights activists as Clarence M. Mitchell, Jr., Rosa Parks, and Martin Luther King, Jr., working for social and political freedom during the period from the end of World War II through the passage of the Civil Rights Act in 1964 and the Voting Rights Act in 1965 supported by President President Lyndon B. Johnson. Many of their efforts were acts of nonviolent civil disobedience aimed at disrupting the enforcement of racial segregation rules and laws, such as refusing to give up a seat in the black part of the bus to a white person Rosa Parks, or holding sit-ins at all white diners. By 1968 all forms of segregation had been declared unconstitutional by the Supreme Court, and by 1970 support for formal legal segregation had dissolved. Brown v. Board of Education of Topeka, Kansas in 1954 outlawed segregation in public schools. The Fair Housing Act of 1968, administered and enforced by the Office of Fair Housing and Equal Opportunity, prohibited discrimination in the sale and rental of housing on the basis of race, color, national origin, religion, sex, familial status, and disability. Formal racial discrimination became illegal in school systems, businesses, the American military, other civil services and the government. Topic: <inaudible> Contemporary segregation. Topic: <inaudible> Bahrain. 
On 28 April 2007, the Lower House of Bahraini Parliament passed a law banning unmarried migrant workers from living in residential areas. To justify the law MP Nasser Fadhala, a close ally of the government said, "...bachelors also use these houses to make alcohol, run prostitute rings or to rape children and housemaids." Sadiq Rama, technical committee head, who is a member of al wefaq said, "...the rules we are drawing up are designed to protect the rights of both the families and the Asian bachelors, these laborers often have habits which are difficult for families living nearby to tolerate, they come out of their homes half-dressed, brew alcohol illegally in their homes, use prostitutes and make the neighborhood dirty, these are poor people who often live in groups of fifty or more, crammed into one house or apartment." said Mr. Rama. The rules also state that there must be at least one bathroom for every five people, there have also been cases in which young children have been sexually molested." Bahrain Center for Human Rights issued a press release condemning this decision as discriminatory and promoting negative racist attitudes towards migrant workers. Nabil Rajab, then BCHR vice president, said. It is appalling that Bahrain is willing to rest on the benefits of these people's hard work, and often their suffering, but that they refuse to live with them in equality and dignity. The solution is not to force migrant workers into ghettos, but to urge companies to improve living conditions for workers, and not to accommodate large numbers of workers in inadequate space, and to improve the standard of living for them. Canada. Since the 1970s, there has been a concern expressed by some academics that major Canadian cities are becoming more segregated on income and ethnic lines. Reports have indicated that the inner suburbs of post-merger Toronto and the southern bedroom communities of Greater Vancouver have become steadily more immigrant and visible minority-dominated communities and have lagged behind other neighbourhoods in average income. A CBC panel in Vancouver in 2012 discussed the growing public fear that the proliferation of ethnic enclaves in Greater Vancouver such as Han Chinese in Richmond and Punjabis in Surrey amounted to a type of self-segregation. In response to these fears, many minority activists have pointed out that most Canadian neighbourhoods remain predominantly white, and yet whites are never accused of self-segregation. The Mohawk tribe of Kahnawake has been criticized for evicting non-Mohawks from the Mohawk Reserve. Mohawks who marry outside of their tribal nation lose their right to live in their homelands. The Mohawk government claims that its policy of nationally exclusive membership is for the preservation of its identity, but there is no exemption for those who adopt Mohawk language or culture. The policy is based on a 1981 moratorium which was made law in 1984. All interracial couples are sent eviction notices regardless of how long they have lived on the reserve. The only exemption is for mixed national couples married before the 1981 moratorium. Although some concerned Mohawk citizens contested the nationally exclusive membership policy, the Canadian Human Rights Tribunal ruled that the Mohawk government may adopt policies it deems necessary to ensure the survival of its people. A long standing practice of national segregation has also been imposed upon the commercial salmon fishery in British Columbia since 1992 when separate commercial fisheries were created for select Aboriginal groups on three BC river systems. Canadians of other nations who fish in the separate fisheries have been arrested, jailed and prosecuted. Although the fishermen who were prosecuted were successful at trial see the decision in R.V. Cap, the decision was overturned on appeal. On final appeal, the Supreme Court of Canada ruled in favour of the programme on the grounds that segregation of this workplace is a step towards equality in Canada. Affirmative action programs in Canada are protected from equality rights challenges by S. 15 of the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms. Segregation continues today, but more than 35% of the fishermen in the BC commercial fishery are of Aboriginal ancestry, yet Canadians of Aboriginal ancestry comprise less than 4% of BC's population. Fiji. Two military coups in Fiji in 1987 removed a democratically elected government led by an Indo-Fijian. The coup was supported principally by the ethnic Fijian population. 
A new constitution was promulgated in 1990, establishing Fiji as a republic, with the offices of President, Prime Minister, two-thirds of the Senate, and a clear majority of the House of Representatives reserved for ethnic Fijians. Ethnic Fijian ownership of the land was also entrenched in the constitution. Most of these provisions were ended with the promulgation of the 1997 constitution, although the president, and 14 of the 32 senators were still selected by the All-Indigenous Great Council of Chiefs. The last of these distinctions were removed by the 2013 constitution. Fiji case is a situation of de facto ethnic segregation. Fiji has a long complex history with more than 3,500 years as a divided tribal nation. Unification under the British rule as a colony for 96 years brought other racial groups, particularly immigrants from the Indian subcontinent. Israel Israeli Declaration of Independence proclaims equal rights to all citizens regardless of ethnicity, denomination or race. Israel has a substantial list of laws that demand racial equality such as prohibition of discrimination, equality in employment, libel based on race or ethnicity. There is however, in practice, significant institutional, legal, and societal discrimination against the country's Arab citizens. In 2010, the Israeli Supreme Court sent a message against racial segregation in a case involving the Slonim Hasidic sect of the Ashkenazi Jews, ruling that segregation between Ashkenazi and Sephardi students in a school is illegal. They argue that they seek to maintain an equal level of religiosity, not from racism. Responding to the charges, the Slonim Herdim invited Sephardi girls to school, and added in a statement, All along, we said it's not about race, but the High Court went out against our rabbis, and therefore we went to prison. Due to many cultural differences, and animosity towards a minority perceived to wish to annihilate Israel, a system of passively co-existing communities, segregated along ethnic lines has emerged in Israel, with Arab-Israeli minority communities being left marooned outside the mainstream. This de facto segregation also exists between different Jewish ethnic groups, Edot, such as Sephardim, Ashkenazim and Beta Israel Jews of Ethiopian descent, which leads to de facto segregated schools, housing and public policy. The government has embarked on a program to shut down such schools, in order to force integration, but some in the Ethiopian community complained that not all such schools have been closed. In a 2007 poll commissioned by the Center Against Racism and conducted by the Geocartographia Institute, 75% of Israeli Jews would not agree to live in a building with Arab residents, 60% would not accept any Arab visitors at their homes, 40% believed that Arabs should be stripped of their right to vote, and 59% believe that the culture of Arabs is primitive. In 2012, a public opinion poll showed that 53% of the polled Israeli Jews said they would not object to an Arab living in their building, while 42% said they would. Asked whether they would object to Arab children being in their child's class in school, 49% said they would not, 42% said they would. The secular Israeli public was found to be the most tolerant, while the religious and Haredi respondents were the most discriminatory. Kenya. The end of British colonial rule in Kenya in 1964 led to an inadvertent increase in ethnic segregation. Through private purchases and government schemes, farm land previously held by European farmers was transferred to African owners. These farms were further sub-divided into smaller localities, and, due to joint migration, many adjacent localities were occupied by members of different ethnic groups. This separation along these boundaries persists today. Kamuli Kassara, in a study of recent ethnic violence in the wake of the disputed 2007-2008 Kenyan elections, used these post-colonial boundaries as an instrument for the degree of ethnic segregation. Through a two-stage least squares regression analysis, Kassara showed that increased ethnic segregation in Kenya's Rift Valley province is associated with an increase in ethnic violence. Liberia. Liberian constitution limits Liberian nationality to Negro people see also Liberian nationality law. For example, Lebanese and Indian nationals are active in trading, as well as in the retail and service sectors. Europeans and Americans work in the mining and agricultural sectors. These minority groups have long tenured residents in the Republic, but many are precluded from becoming citizens as a result of their race. 
Topic: <laughs> Malaysia. Malaysia has an article in its constitution which distinguishes the ethnic Malays and indigenous peoples of Malaysia, i.e. Bumiputra, from the non-Bumiputra such as ethnic Chinese and Indians under the social contract, of which by law would guarantee the former certain special rights and privileges. To question these rights and privileges however is strictly prohibited under the Internal Security Act, legalized by the 10th Article of the Constitution of Malaysia. The privileges mentioned herein covers few of which the economical and education aspects of Malaysians, e.g. the Malaysian New Economic Policy, an economic policy recently criticized by Thierry Rommel, who headed a European Commission's delegation to Malaysia, as an excuse for significant protectionism and a quota maintaining higher access of Malays into public universities. While legal racial segregation in daily life is not practiced, self-segregation does exist. Topic. Mauritania Slavery in Mauritania was finally criminalized in August 2007. It was already abolished in 1980 though it was still affecting the black Africans. The number of slaves in the country was not known exactly, but it was estimated to be up to 600,000 men, women and children, or 20% of the population. For centuries, the so-called Harriton lower class, mostly poor black Africans living in rural areas, have been considered natural slaves by white Moors of Arab, Berber ancestry. Many descendants of the Arab and Berber tribes today still adhere to the supremacist ideology of their ancestors. This ideology has led to oppression, discrimination and even enslavement of other groups in the region of Sudan and Western Sahara. <inaudible> United Kingdom The United Kingdom has no legally sanctioned system of racial segregation and has a substantial list of laws that demand racial equality. However, due to many cultural differences between the pre-existing system of passively co-existing communities, segregation along racial lines has emerged in parts of the United Kingdom, with minority communities being left marooned outside the mainstream. The affected and ghettoized communities are often largely representative of Pakistanis, Indians and other subcontinentals, and has been thought to be the basis of ethnic tensions, and a deterioration of the standard of living and levels of education and employment among ethnic minorities in poorer areas. These factors are considered by some to have been a cause of the 2001 race riots in Bradford, Oldham, and Burnley in the north of England, which have large Asian communities. There may be some indication that such segregation, particularly in residential terms, seems to be the result of the unilateral steering of ethnic groups into particular areas, as well as a culture of vendor discrimination and distrust of ethnic minority clients by some estate agents and other property professionals. This may be indicative of a market preference amongst the more wealthy to reside in areas of less ethnic mixture, less ethnic mixture being perceived as increasing the value and desirability of a residential area. This is likely as other theories such as ethnic self-segregation have sometimes been shown to be baseless, and a majority of ethnic respondents to a few surveys on the matter have been in favor of wider social and residential integration. Topic. United States De facto segregation in the United States has increased since the Civil Rights Movement. The Supreme Court ruled in Millikan v. Bradley 1974 that de facto racial segregation was acceptable, as long as schools were not actively making policies for racial exclusion. Since then, schools have been segregated due to myriad indirect factors. Redlining is the practice of denying or increasing the cost of services, such as banking, insurance, access to jobs, access to health care, or even supermarkets to residents in certain, often racially determined, areas. The most devastating form of redlining, and the most common use of the term, refers to mortgage discrimination. Over the next 20 years, a succession of further court decisions and federal laws, including the Home Mortgage Disclosure Act and Measure to End Mortgage Discrimination in 1975, would completely invalidate de jure racial segregation and discrimination in the U.S., although de facto segregation and discrimination have proven more resilient. According to the Civil Rights Project at Harvard University, the actual de facto desegregation of U.S. public schools peaked in the late 1980s. Since that time, the schools have, in fact, become more segregated mainly due to the ethnic segregation of the nation with whites dominating the suburbs and minorities the urban centers. 
According to Rajiv Sethi, an economist at Columbia University, black-white segregation in housing is slowly declining for most metropolitan areas in the U.S. Racial segregation or separation can lead to social, economic and political tensions. Thirty years the year 2000 after the civil rights era, the United States remained in many areas a residentially segregated society, in which blacks, whites and Hispanics inhabit different neighborhoods of vastly different quality. Dana Merglick writes that in 2002 small businesses in black neighborhoods still received fewer loans, even after accounting for businesses' density, businesses' size, industrial mix, neighborhood income, and the credit quality of local businesses. Gregory D. Squires wrote in 2003 that it is clear that race has long affected and continues to affect the policies and practices of the insurance industry. Workers living in American inner cities have a harder time finding jobs than suburban workers. The desire of many whites to avoid having their children attend integrated schools has been a factor in white flight to the suburbs. A 2007 study in San Francisco showed that groups of homeowners of all races tended to self-segregate in order to be with people of the same education level and race. By 1990, the legal barriers enforcing segregation had been mostly replaced by decentralized racism, where whites pay more than blacks to live in predominantly white areas. Today, many whites are willing to pay a premium to live in a predominantly white neighborhood. Equivalent housing in white areas commands a higher rent. These higher rents are largely attributable to exclusionary zoning policies that restrict the supply of housing. Regulations ensure that all housing units are expensive enough to prevent access by undesirable groups. By bidding up the price of housing, many white neighborhoods effectively shut out blacks, because blacks are unwilling, or unable, to pay the premium to buy entry into these expensive neighborhoods. Conversely, equivalent housing in black neighborhoods is far more affordable to those who are unable or unwilling to pay a premium to live in white neighborhoods. Through the 1990s, residential segregation remained at its extreme and has been called hypersegregation by some sociologists or American apartheid. In February 2005, the U.S. Supreme Court ruled in Johnson v. California 543 U.S. 499 2005 that the California Department of Corrections unwritten practice of racially segregating prisoners in its prison reception centers, which California claimed was for inmate safety gangs in California, as throughout the U.S., usually organize on racial lines, is to be subject to strict scrutiny, the highest level of constitutional review. Topic Yemen In Yemen, the Arab elite practices a form of discrimination against the lower class Akdam people based on their racial system. Topic see also Amity Enmity Complex Topic Notes Topic References Dobritz, Betty A. and Shanks Mile, Stephanie L., White Power, White Pride, The White Separatist Movement in the United States, Johns Hopkins University Press, 2001, 384 pages, ISBN 0-8018-6537-9. Rural Face of White Supremacy, Beyond Jim Crow, by Mark Schultz. University of Illinois Press, 2005, ISBN 0-252-02960-7. Yin, L. 2009. The Dynamics of Residential Segregation in Buffalo, an Agent-Based Simulation Urban Studies 46 13, pp. 2749-2770. Topic further reading Grigoryeva, Angelina and Roof, Martin, The Historical Demography of Racial Segregation, American Sociological Review 80, August 2015, 814-42. Elliot, Mark 2006. Color Blind Justice, Albion Tourget and the Quest for Racial Equality from the Civil War to Plessy v. Ferguson. New York, Oxford University Press. ISBN 0-19-518139-5. Tushnet, Mark 2008. I Dissent, Great Opposing Opinions in Landmark Supreme Court Cases. Boston, Beacon Press. pp. 69-80. ISBN 978-0-8070-0036-6. Brooke, Thomas Plessy v. Ferguson, A Brief History with Documents. Boston, Bedford Books. Fireside, Harvey 2004. Separate and Unequal, Homer Plessy and the Supreme Court Decision that Legalized Racism. New York, Carroll and Graff. ISBN 0-7867-1293-7. Lofgren, Charles A. The Plessy Case, A Legal Historical Interpretation. New York, Oxford University Press. Medley, Keith Weldon 
We as Freeman, Plessy v. Ferguson. Gretna, L.A., Pelican. ISBN 1-58980-120-2. Review Chin, Gabriel J. 1996. The Plessy Myth, Justice Harlan and the Chinese Cases. Iowa Law Review, 82-151. SSRN 1121505. Nightingale, Carl H. 2012. Segregation, A Global History of Divided Cities. Chicago, London, University of Chicago Press. ISBN 978-0-226-58074-6. External links A site dedicated to the life of MLK Encyclopedia Britannica, article on racial segregation a study of segregation Constitutional law and race-conscious policies in K-12 education U.S. racial segregation of proms continue South Africa's District 6 Museum which examines forced segregation